for me, it's those little details are something that every art teacher I've ever had says, don't worry about the details, just do the big shapes. I can't because I feel like the big things get all of the attention and the little details just kind of get shuffled to the background. Those are important to me. There's something about capturing those details in those little thin spaces that seems to work better in the tiny format. And if you look at these, there are really incredible details in them. In my previous life was a semi-professional mountain biker. I felt like doing those races gave me an insight into nature that a lot of people maybe don't get. And all of those things that I saw kind of buried themselves into my subconscious. So then on June 23rd, 2013, I just decided that I think I want to paint. So I tried over the next year, I tried a whole variety of different media, so with, with acrylic, with ink, with colored pencil, with transparent watercolor, with opaque watercolor, everything I could think of except pastels for some weird reason. <laughs> so I frantically searched on the internet to try to figure out how to do this. And I lucked into an incredible, remarkable teacher. And Robert asked me the one question that nobody had asked before, what types of pastels and what paper are you using? And when I told him, he was so sweet, he said, oh, honey, it's not you. You're using really cheap materials. <laughs> These range anywhere from $3 to $21 each. And they're not like paint, so you don't mix them. You optically blend where you just put layers on top of others. He had me get sanded paper, which is like, it's like sandpaper from the drugstore, but it's a really high quality archival surface. And that changed everything for me. All of a sudden, what I saw on the trail, I can now paint it. And I love the aspect of, I don't know if it's being a child again or just getting out of my everything has to be orderly and just make a horrible mess. <laughs> but you hold these in your hand to paint. So your hand is directly touching the medium. There's no brush, there's nothing in between. And I just love that connection. So pastels let me layer all of those colors that I saw and just bring it out to life. I had gotten really badly injured on the trail and then as I was rehabbing, a car hit me on the road. But I was out of biking for about five years, so that was about the time then I started painting it. When I first started painting, I painted small because that tends to be a normal thing with people. They're scared of that big giant canvas with nothing on it. But I got criticized and fussed at a lot and artists telling me, oh, you should paint bigger, you should do bigger, bigger is always better. I disagree. The things I saw in the woods that caught my attention were tiny little details. It wasn't the big picture or the big shape. It was tiny little details like the light on a corner of a leaf or something like that. That's what caught my attention. I knew in my head that there was this pervasive, overwhelming sense of anxiety and depression that I couldn't really identify. And I had tried for years to find a therapist. So when I finally got fortunate enough to find some therapists to work with me, I, it changed everything in my whole life. Um, therapy has helped me bring my paintings more into what I'm feeling and what I need. So I kind of changed, instead of just giving my paintings away to anybody who asked for them, which is what I was doing for a long time. Um, I've kind of changed it now, and I'm giving them to people who will donate to charities that I support. And H158 Books has teamed up with me, and they have a whole lot of my larger paintings that I don't want anymore. So they are donating anything people want to pay for these paintings. They just have you pay it directly to the Loveland Foundation, because when I was searching for my own therapy, and doing some research. And for some reason, black girls and black women are really disproportionately impacted by an inability to find therapy. So this foundation pays for them to find therapy. I just don't ever want money to stop people from getting what they need. 
because it stopped me from getting what I needed for decades. So it began to click with me that the places that I like to paint and the things that I like to paint and all those tiny details are things that other people don't notice. Just like on this little tiny miniature, this is my backyard. And what got me here, the flowers, of course, I really liked, but what I really loved was the gray green on the trunk of the tree. To me, those little places are little bits of hope that hide out, that you can't always access, that you can't always find if you're not looking, if you're not stopping for a minute to look. So part of my therapy is sitting with emotion, is sitting with how you feel, is sitting with the present moment right now. And that's, the, that's how I paint. And a lot of my paintings, I'll always say on my website, they're inspired by because they're not an exact replica. It's my, it's my interpretation of the personality of the place. But I think you're losing a lot if you think bigger is better and that little things don't matter. Little things do matter. Even Sherlock Holmes <laughs> said little things are the most important things. I want people to look at my paintings and I want them to look at them up close. You know, these are not the types of works that you stand 30 feet back and, and squint and then it looks like something. Get right in there. I, I want people to just walk right up to it. There's, there's nothing in there that I'm trying to hide from close scrutiny. It's, there's a sense of courage from doing miniatures that I've developed I never had which is basically scrutinize it, look at it really close, take a magnifying glass. At the last show at the Museum of Natural Sciences, I left magnifying glasses there for people to look at them closely. Now, just because there is darkness and there is sadness, that's not necessarily the worst thing because there's that shows you the light even better. It, it's sort of like the night sky is more brilliant in the darkest areas. I'm just going to show you how I did the sky and the tools I use, which is a catalyst clay shaper, just a big old thick piece of rubber, palette knife. This can also be replaced with a toothpick or a push pin, but I use a palette knife because I can hold it better. But for the sky, you can just put some color in here and then put some white clouds. So you just take this and just kind of, you know, roll it around. And then the foreground, you just put some trees in. And when you put your little flowers down in the bottom, you can make little marks with the knife. I don't want the only things that our future generations have are just news reports about how the environment's being destroyed. I want to at least capture some of it. I want people to see that just because things appear dark, there's still light. If you look, if you just take a minute and look, there's still light. There's still a little bit of, little bit of hope buried in there. In some of the paintings, it's very obvious. In some of them, you have to look a little more closely. Don't miss the magic. It's those little tiny things. Just take those little small bits. Take that tiny bit of hope. Keep that magic. Look for the magic. There, there's, there is beauty in everything.